There is a problem that I see a lot of people run into. Look at this weld. Looks great and nice and tidy, but then what the heck happened here? And this is such a simple fix too. I'm gonna fire up the machine and show you how you can make sure this never happens to you and ruins your welding passes. So check out this joint right here. This is a piece of aluminum pipe and I'm going to TIG weld caps on either end. As I'm welding along here, watch this. We have everything running along absolutely fine, but then watch this as I approach the end of the joint. Oh boy, look at this, total mess, what's going on? And for some people, no matter how hard you try, you can never actually seal this one up. So what the heck is happening here? I don't actually know the proper term for it, but this is something that I've always referred to as blowback. Now this is something that I saw a lot of when I first started learning how to TIG weld. I didn't know what it was, why it was happening, or more importantly, how to fix it. So what's happening as we are welding on something like this is we are basically closing up a sealed area. As we are welding, it's heating up the base material, but that's not all. We have hot air and gas essentially trapped inside of this compartment here. And as we are approaching the point of sealing this area up, the trapped air inside is also being heated up and expanding and with nowhere to go. Near the end, it makes its final attempt to escape or vent, where at this point it will push back and blow the shielding gas away. This creates the gross looking area that we can see here, as well as the escaping air or gas creating this hole that we can't effectively seal up. Now there are a few different ways I'm sure people could describe this problem, but with the example that I'm showing here, we obviously need to fix this. And I'm gonna show you exactly where it all went wrong with this one, and it actually happened before we even struck up our first arc. Okay, let's do this differently. I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna prepare the exact same piece of pipe and end caps, but here is where you come in. Whenever we are welding something, we need to be aware of possibilities like this. When we're welding on a project, we need to identify areas that are potentially able to overheat really easily. This could dictate where we put our tacks when we are assembling the joint, where we are going to place our stop starts in all of our welds, or even the direction of which way we're going to be heading with our welding passes. So taking a look at a project like this, you now know that this is a sealed compartment and the issue of blowback is a severe possibility. So at this point, it is on you to identify that this is a possible problem that you're gonna have to deal with. So now that you know that, how do you deal with it? I'm gonna introduce you to our friend that's gonna save the day here. We are gonna drill what I call a weep hole. What I'm gonna do is drill a hole right in the center of the pipe length here. And I'm gonna explain why the location of this weep hole is important in a second here, hang on for that. But what this is gonna do is allow our expanding air and gas to vent through this area where we can direct it so it's not gonna mess with our welding. So at this point, as we are welding, the conditions of our weld is gonna remain the same from the beginning all the way to the end of the weld, no sudden interruptions. And the idea is, is that we finish with a nice little button like this one here. This is gonna be a much better finish to our welding instead of this crazy mess here, boo. Now the funny thing is, is that I guarantee that you have encountered weep holes a million times in stuff out in everyday life and you've never even known it. For example, check out my brand new bike right here. What's up baby? This is my new brand new BMX that I am riding these days. You've all ridden bikes before. Check out this area right here. We have this bridge or little gusset in between the seat stay as well as the chain stay right here. We're not going to get into the welding that I've seen on this bike. We'll save that for another episode maybe. But looking at these little bridges or gussets, these are sealed areas. And then as we take a look over here, well, would you look at that, weep holes. I guarantee that if you take a look at pretty much any bike in the history that you've ever ridden before, it's going to have had some sort of version of these weep holes here somewhere on the frame. Now, before this frame was probably welded out, these areas would have been pre-drilled out ahead of time. We can see here that these have been centered to look somewhat cosmetic, I guess. Typically when I'm doing something like this, I would argue that the weep hole should go on the bottom of something like this. That way in the future, if water ever collects in this area, it's gonna be able to drain out through this area instead of uh, sitting in it and pooling and corroding the metal over time. But obviously with some things like a bike frame here, hole location can also introduce stress points for structural considerations. I'm not an engineer, I'm not really that smart, but this is something to consider where you drill the hole. So identify where this is gonna become a problem and prepare yourself before you start welding. 
This takes care of the issue before it even happens. And sometimes you can disguise these holes as something else. This way you don't have a suspicious hole just located in a random spot. Take a look at the top and the down tube here, also sealed up when welding. But we can see that there are holes drilled for brake hardware here acting as weep holes. They serve a purpose of obviously being able to mount the brake hardware later down the line, but these were most likely drilled in advance to make it easier, obviously, but it also acts as vent or a weep hole during weld out. If you plan ahead knowing that the project that you're working on is going to require holes for like fasteners or bolts or anything like that later down the line, pre-drill your stuff before welding it out. Problem gone forever. Now with a lot of different pipe welding, this is very common. Look at this here. This is from a student who went through my online TIG welding programs. You can see he started out with aluminum exercises, working his way through different projects. And now he has started his own business doing specialty automotive work and he is now killing it. But take a look at this. This is a roll cage that he made for a vehicle. We can see after it's all put together, each pipe runs into one another. There are a ton of areas where he would have had to deal with the possibilities of blowback happening. Now, obviously what we're looking at here is steel, but the same rules still apply. Matter of fact, in my final project, in my aluminum TIG welding program, you can take online. In that final project, I teach you this stuff and how to use it in real world welding applications. Again, if you haven't seen it, check out my online programs in the description below. Now with this stuff, you can drill a hole somewhere where the mating part will eventually sit. Then with this hole drilled beforehand, when you place the piece over top to weld it over, this way you can completely hide the hole. Inside of my bike frame, there would also probably have been holes drilled in the bottom bracket shell or the head tube as well. And taking a look at something like this piece of plate here, in this circumstance, I can drill the hole first because now we're gonna plan ahead, right? And then later after that's done, I can add the pipe over top and at this point, weld it out. That way it's venting from the inside where we can't even see it. And then we're not forced to put a hole somewhere stupid like this here. This looks really terrible. Okay, so now that we've got the exact exact same joint tacked together here. Let's weld it out now that we have a weep hole and see the difference. Today I'm using the Canowell 201 Pulse D machine. I love this machine. These machines have always been a crazy bang for your buck as far as what you get, but Canowell is actually offering a rebate program on these machines so you can get an even better deal on them right now. Go check them out, pick one up. Putting a piece of pipe in a small fixture like this helps out a lot. It's not gonna roll away and you can elevate the end of the pipe however you are comfortable. Lighting up here to get going with the weld let's check it out as I light up here I'm being patient with my start adding a little bit of filler but I'm making sure I'm not adding too much so that I don't overfill the pass as I'm traveling along I'm making sure that I am using the correct stepping distance and then as I'm stopping to make my stop starts, I'm keeping them as flush as I can so I can maintain a good and consistent profile. Again, welding along, overfilling with this is what you want to avoid. This is what's gonna to help to create really good consistency going around something like this. Now, as I approach the end here, this is where it all went wrong last time. I'm taking it nice and slow, keeping an eye on things. Let's see what happens. Finishing up with a bit of post flow here and taking a look at it. Look at that, nice. Do we see a gross blob on this one to finish this one up? No, we do not. We see a perfectly centered button. It matches the rest of the welding area really nice. So do you see how all of the planning and preparation that we do beforehand is vitally important to the results that we get? And now planning ahead to properly vent out any projects that you are doing, whether strategically placing these holes where they look decent and somewhat cosmetic or disguising them as something else useful later down the line, or like we talked about here, just hiding them completely. Planning ahead with this is going to save you a ton of headaches later down the line. Go download my free TIG welding workbook. It has tons of information that I teach my students online. And again, it's completely free, no charge. Just pop your email in and I'll send it to you. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James, Phil and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.